morning, everybody. We're in Deer River, Minnesota. Small little town. We have an empty 53-foot step behind us. You know, we don't like to see it empty, so we're gonna go up to Kenora, Ontario, on the Canadian side of the border, pick up some freight, again, to put on it. Same stuff as we had yesterday. It'll be different, but same idea, you get it. I'm excited, let's get going, let's get this day on the road. So we stopped here at the Senex. Grab us a little cup of joe. Cup of go go. And we're gonna go straight through here because I gotta go that way. North towards Canada. It's gonna be a good day. It's a little bit wet and dreary out today, but it's fall. What do you expect? stop too they got everything in here it's like your typical American travel stop it's just got everything America's awesome they cover all the bases in one spot it's like a mini Walmart So I believe this is Highway 6, right? 6, we take this all the way up to the 71. The 71 takes us right up to International Falls, Minnesota. We cross over into Ontario, into Fort Francis, Ontario. And we follow that road all the way up to Kenora. as often as when we go the other way. Just about at the Canadian border here. 200 meters, turn left on 2nd Avenue, US 53 and then turn left to 900 meters. We gotta pay to go back into Canada though. It's free to come into the US from Canada, but to go back into Canada from the US, you gotta pay. They like you so much and they want you to stay down here so badly that they'll actually charge you to leave. That's how neighborly the US is. Good people, really friendly. They really don't want you to leave. Or maybe it's the other way around. Maybe Canada just doesn't want me back and they're charging me to come back home. It's free for me to leave. They're like, get out of here, trucker drivers, get out of here. But when I want to come home, they're like, okay, well, I guess you can come back, but you're gonna have to pay. One of those two. It doesn't make sense, right? Why wouldn't they, if it's gonna be a toll, why isn't it both ways? Turn left on, Avenue. Nice truck, look at this guy. Nice. A 
last little stretch here, about 20 miles to uh, Trans Canada, 30 kilometers. Twisty, windy little road. It's highway, uh, highway 71. It's the same highway that's on the U.S. side. It just continues on the Canadian side. Same number and everything. Highway, highway 71. Just on this side of the border, it's called the Kings Highway 71, or just Kings Highway 71. And uh, on the other side of the border, it's called U.S. 71. Getting close. Hopefully reloading will go pretty quickly. I'm, I'm pretty sure it will be, as long as there's not a big lineup. We're getting there kind of later in the afternoon. Sometimes when you get there later in the afternoon, everybody else also gets there later in the afternoon, right? And you're sort of stuck behind the lineup. That's why it's nice to get there early. But our uh, logbook just wouldn't let us get any further. Well, I could have gotten further last night, I guess, right? We would have gotten here at four in the morning though. And I wouldn't have been able to get working any sooner. I'd still have to stop for my 10 hours so I can go back to the US. You know, I think if this van in front of me got a little bit closer to that pickup, that the pickup would probably go faster. <laughs> right behind him. I don't get why people do that. Why do people tailgate? purpose of that. I get very nervous when I'm too close to the person in front of me. I get very nervous that they're suddenly going to break or that a deer or something is going to jump out in front of them and they, that they're going to have to slam on the brakes and then I'm going to hit them. And it's my fault. I guess other people aren't worried about that or, or what? I see it all the time. People just right behind the person in front of them. pickup is going very slow in uh, the van's defense I guess the pickup in front of them is going well below the speed limit it is getting annoying you can't let your emotions drive your vehicle though oh he's going for it no signal or anything but he's going for it blind corner coming up ahead hope nobody's coming oh, looks like he got lucky okay You gotta make sure that you're driving your vehicle and that your emotions aren't driving the vehicle. Easier said than done sometimes. For some reason, as soon as people get inside a vehicle, they just turn into a bunch of hotheads. But if they meet each other in the supermarket, no one says a word to anyone, right? Everyone's a lot more patient. Everybody's a soldier in the safety of their vehicle. It seems to always be Sunday here. I always having to dress up in my Sunday best. Well, we're here again. There's two trucks in front of me to get loaded and they're currently loading uh, another guy over there. And I think another two. Yeah, so there's four guys in front of me plus one in the tarp bay, five guys in front of me. It's, I'll have to wait a little bit, but it's usually it usually goes pretty quick. That's all right. I'll sit and wait. We'll get this thing loaded, tarp it, tie it down tarp it I always find it funny when people put the tarps on and then put the straps over the tarps I always think like <laughs> I wonder if they put their underwear over their pants too <laughs> uh, yeah all right my turn my turn I follow the forklift guy to where he wants me Throw my product on the trailer. Before you know it, we'll be out of here. It'll be a late night tonight though, definitely. I'm gonna try and get out of here as fast as possible because I want to get unloaded as early as possible tomorrow morning. But I still have time to go get a reload, hopefully. All right, friends. I'm the last one here. And there's my Christmas present for Santa. Didn't need that one. There's two tarps. Looks a little poofy down here, I know. That's because there's two portable ratchets under here. I had to uh, use portables there because apparently there wasn't enough winches right here. Those winches from over there don't slide over here. Heh. <laughs> so, it is what it is. 
this all buttoned up here. I'm just going to fix that corner down there a little bit. Uh, 6, 12, 13. I've got 13 12 foot pieces in here, 12 foot lifts. So 6 and 6, and then the 13th one on the top in the center. All ready to rock. Let's drive into the night. I'd like to get down to Brainerd tonight yet. Sun's already going down. We'd be there probably around 1, 1 30 in the morning. We'll see. We're not getting any closer sitting here though, so let's get trucking. You ready, old blue? Let's go. Oh, oh. These three are out again. I'm gonna replace that as soon as we move. Get the important stuff out of the way first and get the family moved into our new house and then we'll replace that. Feeling good. It's a good time of year. It's uh, it's not too cold. It's not too hot. It's nice and cool. I don't sweat nearly as much. So we got to Brainerd last night. And this is the following morning. Walked around the trailer. I've done pre-trip on everything all the tires are filled with air suspension is filling up with air right now we're gonna go get this delivered and from here I head to Iowa and again just like that it's empty it's that easy Trying to tell my back that anyways. <laughs> you know you're starting to get a little bit older when you can feel it after you unload. Just a little bit, not bad. Just a little bit. But... So we have an empty trailer here now and we've got a little bit of an empty jaunt or an empty, uh... we've got a few empty miles in front of us. That's what I'm trying to tell you. We're going all the way over to Burlington, Iowa. There's a very shiny loony over there. You might even say it's a toonie. And I know it's a lot of empty miles to get there. It's about 800 kilometers, 500 miles to get there. And it's, it's a pretty shiny loony. I know by the time I get there, it's gonna be a little dull. It'll be like a dull loony, but it's still a loony. A loony's a loony. If you don't know what a loony is in uh, Canada or $1 coins, are called loonies and our two dollar coins are called toonies. I know we're very clever. We're, we're... That's us. That's Canadians. So yeah, we're gonna see if uh, we can get there tonight yet. Let's see. Sorry, I'm just trying to think in my head exactly how I'm gonna get there because today when I'm filming this it's a Friday, right? And I don't load this load until Monday so I got a bit of a layover too. But I'm going to pick this load up first thing Monday morning and deliver it into Saskatchewan uh, following Tuesday, hopefully in the afternoon. And I'm doing this now because, because like I said, it's got a nice little, uh, nice little tag on it for me. And uh, this might be my last, well, this will be my last longer one before we move. And it'll kickstart my week off next week. So I don't get to go home this weekend. My options are pretty much I go home empty from here which would be almost the same. It would be about 600, 700 kilometers. Or I go to Iowa and I spend the weekend there, drive a little bit further empty, and then get a nice paying load first thing Monday morning to deliver. So I chose that option. So made my decision, I'm sticking to it. That's what we're doing. So we're going to Iowa. Got a load first thing Monday. <laughs> I'm going to be sitting around in the truck for a bit, but it's my best option. And then I have about uh, a week and a half off to get this move done and get us settled in. So remember, I'm a Canadian, right? So I'm in the U.S. right now. I got to go from Minnesota to Iowa empty because I'm not allowed to pick up any freight here in Minnesota to get me down to Iowa. That would be nice, wouldn't it? 
but that's called interstating. I'm not allowed to pick up freight in the United States and drop it off in the United States. To put it simply, that would be stealing a job that an American driver is supposed to be doing, right? That's very illegal, comes with big fines. You can't do that. So I drop my load off here in Minnesota, which is in the United States. I have to pick up a load that's going directly back to Canada. My new load is in Iowa. So I've got to go to Iowa empty, pick up that load and go directly back to Canada with it from there. And that's how that works. So don't really have a choice. It's a whole load of motorcycle doors down to Iowa. We'll continue with that tomorrow. So thanks for hanging out with me uh, through this vlog today. I'll see you right here tomorrow, right? Make sure you're subscribed if you're new. Uh, if you want to find me on other social media, Facebook, uh, Instagram, X, stuff like that, all my links to my other social media are down below in the description of every video. If it's not there, it's not me. There's people who like to pose as me and try to scam you. Uh, they usually have a Telegram account. I don't have a Telegram account. Uh, I don't have anything to do with a Telegram social media thing. I, I don't use it. So that's not me. All of my social media that you can follow me on has the little check mark behind my name. That means they verified my identity, that that is in fact me. So you can trust that, but still be careful. On here, online, if you get a comment that looks like it's from me, sometimes they steal my profile picture, <coughs> excuse me, and use a similar username. Uh, and then they try to get you to leave this site and go to their site or something. They say they have a special gift or package for you, right? It's not me. If you want to know if it's me on this, on this page down below in the comment section, click on the username. And if it doesn't take you to my homepage where all my videos and playlists are, it's not me. On YouTube here, I'm also verified. I also have that little check mark beside my name as well. It says trucker underscore Josh with a little check mark. So that's me. So I'll see you tomorrow, everybody. Be safe out there and uh, think of me when you're on the road. Please remember to drive safe. We'd all like to get home to our family.